Hey, how you doing, econ students? This is Jacob Clifford. So you're getting ready for your next exam and you need a little help with comparative advantage. Here's a trick that works every single time. It's called the quick and dirty. Now, first I have to tell you the story behind it. About 15 years ago, I was in LA training econ teachers. I was going over how to teach comparative advantage and this guy wearing a fedora says, hey, Jacob, do you ever do the quick and dirty? And I was like, what? You know, the quick and dirty. Then he stands up and showed me what I'm about to show you. It's the easiest and dirtiest way to find comparative advantage. When your teacher professor gives you one of these questions and asks you to identify comparative advantage, just multiply 10 times two, that gives you 20, or eight times five, that gives you 40, Pick the higher number, that tells you who has the comparative advantage. So Canada should specialize in producing cars, and the U.S. should specialize in producing planes. Do you see what I mean? It's just dirty. You don't have to calculate opportunity costs or do anything else. All you have to do is multiply, and it gives you the right answer every single time. Let's try it again. You have two countries, Brazil and France. You have two products, boats and trains. Now to find comparative advantage, you can use the quick and dirty. Three times 12 is 36. Four times six is 24. You pick the higher number, 36. Brazil should produce the boats. France should produce the trains. Compared to the longer way of finding comparative advantage, this is way faster and way easier. It's dirty. In fact, I bet you could find comparative advantage in less than five seconds. So let's do a speed round. Five seconds on the clock. Here we go. Four times 15 is 60. Five times 10 is 50. 60 is bigger. China should produce the food. India should produce the clothes. Dirty. Oh, it's so dirty. <laughs> Now notice all of these so far have been output questions. For input questions, when they give you the number of hours or number of workers or machines, you can use the same strategy, just pick the lower number. For this one, it says the chart shows the number of hours it takes for each country to produce one car and one plane. This is an input question. 10 times two is 20, eight times five is 40. Pick the lower number, Germany should produce the cars, Spain should produce the planes. Dang, it's dirty. Oh. Just remember when you're doing the quick and dirty for output questions, you want the higher numbers for input questions. You want lower numbers. Now, when I teach this to students, they always complain. Why do we even do it the other way? Why do we bother calculating opportunity cost? The reason why is because this is dirty. You're not actually showing you know anything or can explain anything. You're just getting the right answer and that's it. You need to be able to do it the other way to answer other questions on the exam or to find terms of trade. Huh? The point is, think of the quick and dirty as a backup. When you see one of these questions on your exam, answer it the hard way, then go back and double check your answers by using the quick and dirty. Now, if you need more help practicing comparative advantage, take a look at the free practice sheet I have inside my ultimate review packet. And if you need more help finding the terms of trade, take a look at the video I posted on YouTube. And lastly, if this video was helpful, in the comments below, write, hey, thanks Clifford for doing the quick and dirty with me. Thanks for watching, until next time.